uh, I want to touch about something you uh, just talked about, which is kind of being alert and like uh, keeping an eye out for like events that are happening to you. And that plays a big role in uh, increasing serendipity. Is that right? Absolutely. And you know what's fascinating is there's a one of my favorite ex experiments actually is about exactly that kind of alertness and also in a way the way we frame the world. The more we look at the world as something that has potentiality, that there could be something out there, the more it starts to happen. And so in this one experiment, they took someone who self-identifies as lucky, you know, someone who says good things tend to happen to me and, and so on. And someone who self-identifies as very unlucky. So bad things tend to happen to me. I'm always in accidents and so on. And we 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 both know people on that spectrum, right? Like on, on that kind of continuum, like like we, we can replace people on, on that. And so now the researcher tells both people, walk down the street, go into a coffee shop, order a coffee and sit down, and then we'll have our interview. Now, what he doesn't tell them is that there's hidden cameras along the streets and inside the coffee shop. Uh, there's a five pound note, so money in front of the coffee shop and inside the coffee shop, the seat that's empty is next to this extremely successful businessman who can make big dreams happen. Now, the lucky person walks down the street, sees the five pound note, picks it up, goes inside the shop, orders the coffee, sits next to the businessman, engages him in the conversation, they exchange business cards, potential opportunity coming out of it. We don't know that. The unlucky person walks down the street, steps over the five pound note so doesn't see it, goes inside the shop, orders a coffee, sits next to the businessman, ignores the businessman, and that's that. Now, at the end of the day, they ask both people, so how was your day today? And so the lucky person says, well, it was amazing. I found money in the street, made a new friend, and, you know, potential opportunity coming out. The unlucky person just says, well, nothing really happened. And especially the first part, right? The first part was about, do I see something, even when someone, a lot of times, you know, the amount of times I've found money in the street, <laughs> the amount of times, it's crazy how, how much money people drop, right? Mm. Because, I mean, imagine how, yeah, it, it's, it's just in people's pockets. But the point here being the alertness to the unexpected, once you start seeing that the unexpected happens all the time, you also then kind of get into the mode as, oh, actually, great. Like, I can do something with this and this and this. And then serendipity starts to happen all the time. Yeah, that was one of my favorite experiments in the book. Like the lucky person, yeah, they go to a coffee shop, they find the money, they sit next to the businessman, and they make like you know a new connection. But if you're that unlucky person, or you identify as unlucky, what kind of things can people do to kind of shift that mindset and develop, as you say, the serendipity mindset? I'm a big fan of simple practices. You know, not kind of shifting one's whole life, or you know, kind of like doing like a big picture move or something. Really, like small behavioral changes. So, for example, one of the things that I found extremely helpful to do is to start with like small things. Like, for example, writing down what are three things I'm interested in at the moment. Like in my case, for example, I'm super excited at the moment thinking about how can I take the serendipity mindset into as many curricula and organizations as I can. Like that's kind of like in a way something that I try to build into every conversation in some way. And so if you write down these kind of three key interest areas and then every conversation you have now, you're just seeding a little bit of this into a side sentence. And it will be surprising how many times people will be like, oh, my God, such a coincidence. I was just developing a new curriculum. You should stop by whatever it is. And the, I, I learned that from uh, a great friend of mine in London uh, called Oli Barrett. And, you know, he has really perfected this, quote unquote, hook strategy, which is all about essentially if you would ask him, what do you do, Oli? He wouldn't just say, I'm a technology entrepreneur. He would say, I'm a technology entrepreneur recently started playing the piano, but what I'm really excited about is reading about the philosophy of science. And so what he's doing here is, is he's giving you three potential hooks where you could be like, oh my God, such a coincidence. I recently started hosting piano matinees. You should come by. My God, such a coincidence. My sister is teaching the philosophy of science. You should give a guest lecture. The point here is that we can cast these hooks for other people to pick them up and connect the dots for us. So I think that's one of the practices I like the most because you're not only uh, reacting to something random, but actually you're creating a positive accident. You're you're creating a meaningful accident to to happen. Um, there's a lot, lot of other things I think in terms of practices, but one thing the more I've been looking into these questions that I found more and more interesting is actually the more deeper underlying psychological limiting beliefs that we all have. Right? If you think back to the coffee shop situation, where you are in this coffee shop and Maybe you sense that there might be an opportunity in the situation, but you don't act on it. Or let's say you sit in a meeting and you have a random idea, but you don't you don't you don't say it because you feel either not worthy, not ready, 
um, um, not like it's not mature enough, whatever it is. And really, I'm, I've become a big fan of saying, okay, let's write down those moments where we knew there could have been something, but we didn't act on it. And then let's try to understand the pattern behind it. What is holding us back? And then really diving deeper into this and working on this. And I think what that does is it's not only then about tactical small things, but it's really about shifting your mindset towards how to actually become luckier. And then once you become luckier, actually you start believing in it more and more. And then you, you, you know, get there more and more. Yeah, because I know I'm sure a lot of people and uh, myself, we love that book uh, Mindset by Cal Dweck and you develop this growth mindset. But I think the next step is also developing this serendipity mindset where you kind of look at your life, kind of look at what's happening to you and then try, like you said, it's like what maybe what are some possible missed opportunities and that, how can I act on those?